The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika via Zoom. Good morning, Yerika. Nope, I'm getting radio silence. Uh, we're going to try that again. Nope. <laughs> I hope our listeners have a visual on this because for me, at least anyway, it's pretty entertaining. I'm seeing, I'm nervous, Yerika. I'm seeing our nervous producer live show in case you guys were wondering. Radio silence. Okay, so maybe I can set the tone for today's social media minute. Um, as we mentioned, it is World Environment Day and I don't want to like shove this down everyone's throats, but it is an I guess a relevant topic considering today's topic of discussion on social media minute. So it is actually a UN designated environment day. As you can imagine, it encourages worldwide awareness and action to protect what's left of our environment. We talk about climate change on a regular basis, weather abnormalities, and when nature strikes, right? So all of these considered, it is important to talk about World Environment Day. And it leads us, not so coincidentally, into our first topic of discussion on Social Media Minute. Now we're connected with Erica on the line. Good morning. Good morning. For some reason, I can't seem to control any of the buttons on my Zoom window. I keep, yeah, nothing. Sometimes I see you and the, and the, and you're moving. I'm right? moving, right? <laughs> yeah, you're moving, but I just can't control anything on my screen right now. All right. Uh, it's funny because our listeners have a visual on you too. So they saw both of us mouthing things at each other. That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you live from Seoul. Okay, so Yay. in light of World Environment Day, this first topic is so perfect. Um, if we can utilize recycled plastic better, I mean, that should help, right? I mean, that's why we go through the hassle of recycling, cleaning out these, you know, um, reusable goods, essentially. So Seoul is launching a 100% recycled plastic bottles for its branded drinking water, Arisu. That's right. So according to Seoul City, uh, it's going to produce its uh, bottled drinking water brand, Arisu, in 100% recycled plastic bottles. Um, so last year, uh, Seoul City supplied Arisu, uh, the water in bottles made from 30% recycled plastic, uh, which had received certification from the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety. Now, Seoul City has increased the recycled content to 100%. Now, additionally, the amount of plastic used to manufacture uh, each PET bottle has been reduced from 19 grams to 14 grams. Uh, the bottles are going to have no labels, and the production date is going to be engraved uh, using eco-friendly lasers oh. instead of the more conventional ink or chemical dyes. Now, the goal of this initiative is to reduce environmental pollution by uh, packaging emergency water supply. Now, emergency water supply is meant for uh, situations like water supply disruptions or disasters. Um, now, to highlight Seoul's identity, the bottle cap color has also been changed to uh, sky coral. A braille lettering has also been added so that visually impaired people can also consume the water safely. Okay, so uh, they have considered many angles, and that's a good thing. Um, yeah. are, am I the only one who just realized Seoul's uh, color is sky coral? <laughs> sure. <laughs> You learn something new every day. I really do. Okay. So yeah. how many of these bottles of emergency water is Soul City planning to produce this year alone? Yes. Yeah, so this year alone, I mean, this is just the beginning, right? They're going to eventually increase the number of uh, the, the units of uh, these bottles. But the, the city plans for now to produce a total of 650,000 uh, bottles this year. Now, the initiative is going to allow recycling approximately 16 tons of waste plastic. Uh, it's also expected to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 17 tons compared to using bottles made from new plastic. Okay, so I mean, we always knew the system was in place. It's all too easy mm. to uh, utilize eco-friendly lasers of ink and chemical dyes, have no labels, uh, use recycled plastic bottles, but right. I'm going to assume that bottles made from 100% recycled plastic are more expensive to produce due to lower demand. 
That's right. You are correct. Uh, the unit price for a 350 uh, milliliter recycled bottle is 288 won, uh, which is a lot higher than the 110 won uh, that is required for a new plastic bottle. Uh, it is definitely more expensive, like three times. Uh, the amount required oh. for new plastic bottles, it is more expensive, but uh, Seoul Arisu headquarters says the unit price is gradually going to go down uh, moving forward. Now, Seoul City claims that its policy of using 100% recycled plastic is a global benchmark uh, to give you some uh, you know, numbers. The Ministry of Environment and the European Union have set more modest targets a 30% recycled material usage by 2030. Now, major global companies like uh, PepsiCo and Coca-Cola are aiming for 50% recycled content mm. in their plastic bottles and packaging, respectively, by the year 2030. Now, Seoul City is preparing to submit its 100% recycled Arisu bottles to the Recoup Awards that's going to be held in the UK this year. Now, Recoup is a non-profit organization that recognizes leaders in the circular plastics value chain mm. and uh, its members include major companies like Coca-Cola, McDonald's and Nestle. Uh, it, it really is in the interest of a greater good, is it not? Yeah. Uh, if we can figure out a system and these companies should lead the way. I just didn't realize that there was an award ceremony for it to be more green. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if Seoul, uh, Seoul's Arisu can compete. Let's move on to our second buzzword this morning, mm. taking you to the dark side of the moon for a historic first. Uh, China's Chang'e 6 probe lifts off with samples from Moon's far side. That's right. So this expedition started back in May, May 3rd, um, you know, and uh, the Chang'e 6 lunar probe departed, finished, it's done with the expedition. It departed from uh, the far side of the moon on Tuesday and uh, in a, a rather symbolic moment before it took off. Uh, It also became the first country to display its national flag on the far side of the moon, uh, which permanently faces away from Earth. Now, the journey back to Earth is estimated to take about three weeks. Um, A landing uh, expected is expected in China's Inner Mongolia region around June 25th. All right. So towards the end of this month, we'll hear about the samples landing on planet Earth and then they'll do a thorough research and we'll learn a little bit more about the far side of the moon. Uh, Firsts are important, especially in space exploration, because imagine the uncharted territory, what it has to offer. Are there, you know, moon craters where water is available? I mean, that's one of the important resources, right, for even beginning to talk about Mars exploration. But there you have it. Uh, What does this mean for the world's lunar exploration? Uh, It has become really competitive really fast. That's right. It's a really competitive field right now. And if everything goes as planned, uh, China's mission could be a key milestone in its push to become a dominant space power. Earlier this year, NASA Chief Bill Nelson acknowledged the pace of China's moon exploration. Uh, He said the country's advancements were driving uh, the American urgency (laughs) to return to the moon decades after its Apollo mission. It's a funny thing because once the ball starts rolling, (laughs) you realize because of what's at stake, maybe even security wise, all these countries jump on board and they say we need to get there fast Mm. too. (laughs) That's right. All right. This is the second time China has collected samples from the moon after the Chang'e 5 brought back rocks from the near side of the moon in 2020. What do we know about the country's latest lunar exploration? So there was a photo that was posted by uh, CNSA on Tuesday, which is currently trending on China's social media platform Weibo. Uh, It shows the drilled surface of the moon in a shape that resembles the Chinese character Zong, or middle in English, uh, which is the first character in the Chinese word for China. Now, according to this one animation released by CNSA, uh, after collecting the specimens, uh, Chang'e 6 extended a robotic arm to raise the Chinese flag. Very symbolic here. Uh, Now, the flag itself is made from volcanic rock. Uh, Apparently, the rock was crushed. It was then melted and then drawn into fibers, uh, about one third of a diameter of a human hair. And then it was spun into thread and woven into cloth 
that eventually became the Chinese flag. Now, thanks to its material, which is volcanic rock, uh, the flag is able to resist corrosion and extreme temperatures on the far side of the moon. I mean, that process. Yeah. I Is anyone else floored by it? Uh, to create I a am. flag that can resist corrosion, extreme temperatures on the far side of the yeah. moon. <laughs> okay. What kind of insights would the samples collected uh, by the moon lander give us uh, going forward? Yeah, according to experts, uh, the samples could give us some key insights or clues into the origin and the evolution of the moon, the Earth, and the solar system. Uh, the mission itself could provide some really important data and technical practice to advance China's lunar ambitions. And the far side of the moon, we have to understand, is out of range of normal communications, which means that Chang'e 6 must also rely on a satellite that was launched into lunar orbit back in March. Now, China plans to launch two more missions in the Chang'e series uh, as it nears its 2030 target of sending astronauts to the moon. And of course, China is only one of the many lunar yes. programs out there. Multiple countries are taking part in their respective lunar exploration programs. Presently, there is a growing focus on securing access to resources and, of course, further deep space exploration. Moon will be like yeah. kind of like a rest stop. That's right. So um, to mention a few countries, last year, India landed a spacecraft on the moon for the first time ever. Uh, Russia's first lunar landing mission in decades ended in failure when its Luna 25 probe crashed into the moon's surface. Uh, back in January of this year, Japan became the fifth country to land a spacecraft on the moon. A month later in February, NASA-funded mission IM-1 uh, touched down close to the lunar south pole. Uh, the landing at the time was uh, the first by a U.S.-made aircraft, a spacecraft, in over 50 years. Now, NASA is attempting to return American astronauts to the moon as soon as 2026 and build its scientific base camp there. Base camp. On the yep. moon. <laughs> That's right. All right, we'll leave it there for now. 2026 is not that far off. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Two years from now. That's right. Wait and see. Uh, um, on humble Earth. <laughs> <laughs> on humble Earth, indeed. Crazy things happen regularly. If we can cover all of it, my goodness, we wouldn't have enough time on the clock. Now, <laughs> chaos on the highway has gotten our attention yesterday because literally cash was seen flying through the air. A lot of it. Oh, you know, stuff like this happens from time to time. And then, like, you know, chaos is unleashed. It was pure chaos. Uh, yesterday morning on this whole Yang Yang Expressway, banknotes started flying across the road. Uh, cars were seen stopping dead on their path. People sort of like climbing out of their vehicles, trying to scoop up all this cash. Yeah. Uh, according to the Northern Gyeonggi Provincial Police Agency, they received this report at around 8.30 a.m. yesterday that 10,000 and 1,000 won bills were scattered across the road near the Hwadu Interchange. And a CCTV footage confirmed that a large amount of cash had fallen onto the road, which led to cars stopping, drivers stepping out of the vehicles to collect the money. One caller uh, reported finding 80,000 won on the road. Uh, the police arrived at the scene, managed to recover just 30,000 won that was left behind. Now, they're trying to investigate the exact location and the total amount of cash that was sort of unleashed onto the highway. So nobody knows for now where this money came from, but yeah, investigations are currently underway. But it was absolutely disruptive yesterday, early in yes. the morning on these Hoa Young Young Expressway. Not to mention, I think we can imagine if these were 50,000 won banknotes flying around, oh, I think boy. all kinds of questions would be raised because uh, that's a lot more, yeah. I suppose, a more significant amount of money. But these are, you mm -hmm. said 1,000 won bills and 10,000 yeah. won bills. So I do When's wonder. the last time you've actually seen a 1,000 won bill? It's been a really long time. Do people actually use them these days? You don't drive I in guess. Korea, do you? I, no. I, I need I need the valet to take my 1,001 Oh, bills. that's right. Valet parking. <laughs> parking is chaotic in Seoul. But that's that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erica, for today's coverage. Have a safe Pleasure day. As always. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.